hello everyone. Thank you all for coming here today. Uh, my name is Edward. My partner, Sophia, and I are part of Single Lab and work under supervision of Dr. Crystal Zuniga and Dr. Carson Zegler. Today, uh, we're happy to we're happy and proud to present our year-long project called Reconstructions of a Genome Scale Metabolic Model of Picoclone Renovo. So first, the main objective of this project is creating a metabolic model of the green algae called Picoclone Renovo, in short, P renewable to contribute to in-depth understanding of this microalga and to optimize bioproduction. P renewable has shown to be a fast-growing species, uh, fast-growing species that is resistant to high temperature and high salinity, which made P renewable as the leading candidate for an aspiring future source of bioproducts. And let's go into some background information and discover some motivations behind why we chose a microalga called P renewable. First, macroalgae are unicellular, species, uh, unicellular plants with the ability to perform photosynthesis and produce algal biomass from carbon dioxide and light. Algae store energy as lipids and triglycerides, which can be extracted to be used for production of biofuels and food in an environmentally friendly and sustainable way. For instance, the carbon and biomass is converted into environmentally friendly friendly biofuel while consuming greenhouse gases, which helps uh, for global warming and climate change. Uh, despite mar microalgae's um, high potential in producing uh, green energy, many microalgae uh, had failed, Make many microalgae farming had failed due to high cost and inefficiency, such as being unable to tolerate certain temperatures and outdoor environments. However, even with the challenges, P. Renable has uh, shown superior resistance to high temperatures and salinity through experiments in open pond systems. As uh, shown in the figure one, P. Renable grows substantially faster with high optical density than any other uh, potential marker algae, which is a measure of observance of when light passes through the sample of micro microalgae to determine the rate of uh, rate of growth over time. Uh, therefore, with all these unique characteristics, uh, as opposed to the other marker algae, manually curating the metabolic model of P. renewable would allow further, un further understanding of this microalga in a metabolic model. Our theory and methods consist of the creation of a genome scale metabolic model, which consists of five separate stages as shown in the diagram below. We've completed stage one and are in the process of finishing stage two. This manual refinement includes manual curation and analysis of proteomics data. This is the most time consuming and difficult stage of the reconstruction process. So if you look at the figure, you can see an image of chlorella vulgaris, which is the microalgae the draft reconstruction for stage one is based on. This draft reconstruction is a set of metabolic functions created with genome annotations and existing databases. Then is stage two, manual refinement, which includes editing of the reconstruction by evaluating the data and entries. The first part of stage two that we performed was manual curation. So this was done by performing gene protein reaction associations, which sort genes and proteins into specific reactions. This was done with databases like Transporter Classification Database and Uniprot to find specific proteins to fill gaps in the model. Protein Blast is a sequencing alignment tool. It was used to find matches between an inputted protein sequence and our model by aligning their protein sequences in FASTA format. And FASTA format represents nucleotide and amino acid sequences to find matches. The second part of stage two that we did was the determination of biomass composition through proteomics data. This data was received from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory and consisted of four data sets with information on the metabolites and their masses in picochlorum renovo. We used the Big Models database and the Keck Encyclopedia to find the IDs or pathways of specific metabolites if they weren't already present in the model. And at the bottom, we have an image of picochlorum renovo with chloroplast fluorescence to show what the microalgae looks like. After stage two is the creation of a mathematical model with MATLAB. Then stage four and five consists of iterative testing of the model to evaluate its accuracy 
and model usage for insight into Pico Coromanovo's metabolism. Okay, then let's go into some results. The first part of the result is manually refining the already existing Clara Bulgaris database, which entails editing of the reconstruction by evaluating the data and entries. Table one shows a few examples of GPR associations that connect uh, gene, protein, and reactions together. The, sig the significance of the step is that it could catch um, if multiple proteins are capable of carrying out uh, the same functions. Therefore, uh, GPR requires heavy searches through different databases. Uh, through utilizing databases such as uh, TCDB and Uniprot, with basic uh, local alignment search tool called BLAST to compare genome sequences based on different parameters. We were able to uh, manually update 591 reactions and 25 reactions uh, remain still empty. Um, the second part of the results is determining biomass composition using experimental untargeted metabolomics data provided by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. The first untargeted data uh, the first untargeted metabolomics data set had 268 metabolites. The second untargeted metabolomics data set had 369 metabolites. And 44 different metabolites overlapped, which is shown in table two. Then we sorted the first um, the 100 abundant metabolites and searched through databases. First, we checked PICRA model to, to, to determine if that metabolites are expressed in p -Renable. Then we checked big and CAC databases. Among the metabolites, uh, we were able to discover a few pharmaco pharmacological related compounds like uh, tryptophan. Um, as a result, uh, from the first untargeted metabolic data, 30 metabolites were found in Picker model, uh, 21 metabolites were found in big, eight metabolites were found in CAC, and 41 metabolites were not found. Also, from the second untargeted metabolomics data, 37 metabolites were found in Picker model, 13 metabolites were found in BIC, 18 metabolites were found in CAC, and 32 metabolites were not found. Continuing the results, so a heat map was made to show the distribution of mass in Pico Cormonovo of the 100 most abundant metabolites from the four National Renewable Energy Laboratory datasets. So the top two rows of our heat map are correspond to the biomass data set, which includes amino acids, carbohydrates, pigments, and nucleotides, while the bottom two corresponds to the fatty acid data sets. From this heat map, we can see that the most abundant fatty acids are present in larger quantities than the most abundant of other types of metabolites. Then a pie chart was made with the 732 metabolites from two fatty acid data sets, and they were sorted into specific categories to show their distribution within Pico Coram Renovo. Their abbreviations are there on the side, and in this case, we can see that triglycerides were found to make up the largest portion. In conclusion, the mass production of Pico Coram Renovo is a viable solution for globally replacing fossil fuels and implementing biofuels. We detected accumulation of pharmacological compounds such as oxalatin and tryptophan through untargeted metabolomics data. Finalizing the metabolic model of Picochloromonovo will significantly contribute to the scientific understanding of its genomic organization and metabolic capabilities. Lastly, we thank Dr. Carson Zengler and Dr. Crystal Zuniga for their warmest guidance. We also thank Marco, Mark Michael, sorry, Guarnieri from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory for the metabolomics data. In addition, thank you to the GEAR program, Alejandra Arguelles, Lisa Trahan, Ved Vicaria, and Dr. Katya Evdokomenko for this opportunity.